Well, we spoke about um, just very briefly the attack, the attacking shape in the past, but maybe we're going to bring it back to what is shape? When you talk about attacking shape, what are we talking about? Um, about keeping uh, the, the width yeah. of the field or the width of the team? Incredibly important because the Kiwis do it so well. Yeah. But the SA teams also have Lions have uh, been, shape. Yeah, Lions have been doing mm -hmm. really well and also uh, the Cheetahs as well. I think the Stormers as well. Just quickly to show uh, just a, a diagram here. And excuse my writing here. But if we, if we can just have a quick look. The, the field is 70 metres across. And what you're trying to do is get a distribution of your forwards across the field in, in, th in four different channels. In the outside channel is six and two. This is the two, four, two split. Your tight forwards in the middle of the field occupying 20 meters and 20 meters and two guys in the outside channels, the seven and eight. And you'll see it coming up in New Zealand teams when you see Dan Coles, for example, or you see uh, uh, Kieran Reid scoring tries in the wide channels. Yeah. The Lions do it yeah. very well with Warren Whiteley and with Marks. And on the other side, you'll see Yaku Krul or you see Kwaka Smith. Mm -hmm. And the tight forwards in the midfield, like Mostert, taking it up really well. Some teams use one, three, three, one because they tend to make it more dense in mm -hmm. the midfield. But generally, it's after every first phase, you want to get a distribution of your team off your backline players with two guys in the wide channels and two guys running off nine, two guys running off ten, or four off nine and four off ten, depending on the core by ten. So communication is done by the ten telling nine. If it's slow ball, you run the four off nine. If it's quick ball, it goes straight to 10, and he has the option of using the forwards. Is it an oversimplification to suggest that you want your tight forwards pretty much based... Sorry, coach. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. No, no. Is it what? an oversimplification to, to say that you, you'd want your tight forwards pretty much to occupy the centre yeah, of the field, I the middle? The, I think the most important thing about this is it allows you in the transition from attack to defence. So say, for example, you get it through five phases and then a pass goes to ground, it gets turned over, there's a counter rack. If the players remain in these channels, in these four channels, you can easily turn into a defensive structure quite rapidly with your tight forwards generally reasonably close to the breakdown point and your faster guys on the outside. In addition, if the opposition on defense, if you get your tight forwards into the midfield and the opposition kick and you do a counter attack, if you, if you bring the ball back into the center of the field, it gives you two options. You can attack left or right with your loose forward and hook out on the one side with your uh, number seven and eight on the far side. And you've got your big heavies to clean that ruck. So that's what's really important to give options to your 9 and 10. The key uh, aspect of this is you want your 9 and 10 on their feet and communicating. Your 15 goes in the other side, the opposite side from the 10. But it's the forwards that you have to have running lines off your, your 9 and 10. We've got some clips which, Bob's you yeah. pulled, and, mm. and uh, it'll be really interesting if you can show us. Uh, it's pretty interesting to see that width, because with the width that they do have, um, the, what's happening is that the lines now are starting to stretch teams, and it's hard for the fullback to come in, and it was open-style yeah. play. This is just to show the width, and that keeps them honest. Even here with the diamond shape, Nick, that we talk about, already now... 10 that to a forward, 10 to a forward, a forward not to another forward to the backline mm. player, confusing the Bulls' defence and giving uh, and giving an opportunity to the backline player. And, in, and especially the key factor points there is that the guys are running straight onto the field. They're not going diagonally so that they can create the space. Because of the width, you create space behind. But have a look here. Who are the two people chasing Skosan? You've got a number eight and a number six, which proves that they've got the two loose forwards out in the wide channels. When Yankees decided to make the kick, there were players there uh, who were... This is a wonderful example. So uh, here we show those diamond shapes. You can see the two yeah. players that they can release with on the, behind the players. Three forwards off nine, three off ten. The, the weather with and how flat they are with the ball and how much they're running. So it's a matter of having quick hands and slow feet. And look at the players from the outside. Most of he only runs when uh, Alton has got the ball. So that way, he's coming on straight onto the ball. No one is going sideways. And it's still got an option. Can we just of, have a look uh, at the Katia. Bulls defenders? Look at all the Bulls yeah. defenders looking at the 10, not looking at the threat. Mm -hmm. And the moment they, they was, uh, the, Elton picked the right player, and suddenly we have a prop going down the middle of the field and scoring a try and under the pole. And it's a change from how we used to play maybe 10, 15 years ago. We used to chase the ruck. We used to move laterally a lot. Mm. Now this is more up and down. Exactly, exactly. So the important thing is if you, you've your got channel. to keep your players in the same channels, yeah. they remain in those channels and work incredibly hard in those channels. So they will counter ruck or, or, or tackle or uh, uh, you know, win possession or be an option for a cross kick in the wide channels. Your tight forwards are an option for your back, your 9 and 10 to use or not. And the, the more the, the, those players become skilled, the, the Retalics, and uh, you've got an Eben Etzeveth who has got the ability to do it, a Peter Steff to Toya Mostert, that even if a 10 plays the forward, 
there's always the other backline player coming out of the yeah. back mm. that he can play to create a little bit more opportunity. Um, pull well, also a little bit more variety in the attack, which makes it much harder for the defenders to say, "All right, he's getting the ball; we can double tackle him." Yeah. So can we can we quickly take a look at the spacing, at the actual shape of those pods, and we've got extra bodies. Yes, yeah. yeah. Come, so, those come, guys, come, the lazy guys. come earn your living, guys. Come on, come on, <laughs> make it work. Yeah. Can't just, you're no, trying no, to no, I think I think what's I mean what what's, say we've got a we've got a we've got a rack on the far, on the far, there or where where Armour is. We've got a, a rack there. So will you go and play scrum off? And he we're plays ten. So we play that way. We're playing that way. We have a couple. We'd have a couple of guys running to off this way. Come come this side. So we have Bros and, and, and X run, running off nine, and, uh, and Bob, you, you and I running off, running off ten. So, so there are innumerable ball. possibilities here. If we have a ball, if we can just give tight, a ball to... Yeah. 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 So, no, not too tight. Yeah, okay. okay. No, it's that's, space, that's, okay. space, 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 space. So, so here, so here if, if it's slow ball, the call comes from ten to tell he's number nine, it's going to be black ball, which will be the forward's ball, white ball will go to him. So black, black ball, it'll be a forward playing it up, we then restructure again, get a bit like more width. He tries to get momentum and it comes. If it's quick ball, it, it can no, go straight to 10. And, and out of here, he can play bobs. I can come as a forward. You can play bobs. I can take it. Yeah, take it off you. Or bobs, you can play behind my back to another backline player there. Yeah. So you can think, now you're a defender. And if I'm standing here as a defender, as the first, second, and third defender, I'm worried about the scrum off breaking. I see the, the forwards coming short. I can't shift onto the fly-off immediately because yeah. I'm yeah. worried about him. Mm -hmm. So re immediately you stop your first, second, and third defender. The fourth defender or the third defender is looking at the 10, saying, OK, I've got him. But now he's worried about the, the backline player behind and, and the I'm two forwards honest. coming short. So what the Bulls players were doing, if you give the ball to him, Elton had it. He took it to the line. The Bulls guys are getting worried about Elton and are watching the ball and... Elton picked the forward a forward off a yeah. great line. Well, that attacking so, player is dragging the eyes of the defender onto him and precise. away from the, the, the running so, lines. So the way, the way in which the Lions play right. against a defence that isn't well organised and isn't, uh, doesn't understand what they're doing creates huge, huge gaps. Yeah. Just, where it comes... Sorry, Bob. Yeah, no, where no it actually breaks down is when you get big line speed from a defensive side in the first four channels and you leave the fifth and the sixth defender to shift. Just, just uh, the important thing, especially for the defensive side, is that there has to be a communication and there has to be a, a link. If we've got to chain me, yeah. Alma, and Nick, yeah. we stay in the channel. If I start to pulling out a bit yeah. more, go that's when that. the hole becomes. Exactly. And it, it's all about this communication. If you miss out on this connection, it well, becomes yeah, difficult. The one thing we found that, obviously, with the, with the rush defense, what you can do is yeah. you can, if you can get off that line quick enough, you can force guys to make decisions quicker. Yes. So yeah. now, with them sitting on the line, it allows Elton to sit on the ball exactly. for as long as possible, try and make the right decision quicker. What, what Justin and them will do from 10 is to push that 10 and make him make a decision really quickly and yeah. often the wrong one. Well, the, that's, that's the, the secret of a defender is I want you to make the decision so that I can then shift. Yeah. Yeah. But if you force me as a defender to turn yeah. my shoulders and to stick on you, yeah. then you've done your job, you can pass. Can I and ask? That's, it's always the balance yeah. between the attacker Fixing a defender, sure. if he passes early, he hasn't committed. Yeah, so this whole taking it to the line is so important. Yeah. How do you create that uncertainty from a sevens point of view, guys? Because you're talking much fewer numbers. The amount Wide of space you need to cover as a player, defensively and on attack, is, is quite a lot broader, Kyle. Yeah. Um, I think if, you, if you look at somebody like Justin and Sisson, and what they would have done is they would have brought respect with their feet over yeah. time and mm -hmm. their ability to pass yeah. into space and things like that. I don't know, you, you probably know more it's, about it's, how it is. It's actually call. exactly how Nick said it because. You taking on your defender, the other defender, the next defender can't decide to go up or yeah. make a move because he has to see if that defender gets me. Yeah. If he sits, I beat him, he, he goes past me, it's I run hole. through the hole. Yeah. If he sits, and then it creates space for my attackers. Exactly. Uh, so. It's amazing. Exactly. Become like a game of chess, moving, well, moving yes. the players around on the field. Well, well Bros, you should have done that when you were playing. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing is that, that you talk about the sevens players, and what is actually wonderful about the, how you guys have, have, uh, have played is your ability to hit players with 10, 15 meter passes, mm. ball in front, and, and as you're still attacking the line. 
but they're still retaining their depth and you're still passing the ball in front of the player. Those sort of skills, I feel we can still improve in the 15-man game, whereas you guys have really managed to, uh, to, you know, to, to, to conquer that. And also, despite size, you guys are outstanding at the breakdown and breakdown skills. But Nick, that, isn't that, that's translating into, into Super Rugby at the moment. And we see our top teams, our Lions, yeah. the Crusaders, the Chiefs, etc. The guys that have got the accuracy of the pass are the teams that are that are actually the ones that are, are unable to do the game plan that you are speaking about. Exactly. And we've, we've got some great examples of the Crusaders yeah. with what they do. And I'll tell you what, uh, um, you think as an analogy that we could use, think of the 4 by 100 meter final back in the Olympics. Who came second? Who got the silver medal? No, no. We forget Who, those guys. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but Japan, Japan got, this, got the, got the, got the yeah. silver medal. They don't have anyone that was in the top eight in the 100 meter final. No one running under 10 seconds. Yet they ran three, 37 seconds in the final. Small detail. With, with, it's the small detail and it's the momentum that you gain. Okay, let's talk about passing when we return because this is obviously an important thing. And we're going to chat more to our sevens champions yeah. in the house. That's all coming up on First 15 as well as our trivia challenge. The players are not that great, we, we average. I think it's the bond that we share that makes it so special. The players play for each other. And... That broke in a long drought, Wellington. Champions for the first time since. 